Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. This is the start of a new multi-part series on designing and building a new type of hinge for a hydraulic cart in my shop. Uh, if you'd like engineering plans and 3D models for this project, go ahead and check out the Patreon link down in the description. Okay, let's dive in. All right, let's start by looking at the problem we're trying to solve here. This is the cart in its normal use case under a pinball machine. If we zoom in there, you can see that the uh, uh, handle's been uh, reattached with some gate hinges. And uh, this is a pretty typical mod for this cart by pinball people. And you can see that it works fine for its intended use case, but it uh, becomes harder to use in every other case. Uh, the handle pushes forward, uh, and uh, you can see I tried to fix it there at one point with some crappy L brackets, and uh, this really doesn't work. So I want a solution that will allow me to uh, lock the, the, the handle upright so it still works as it's originally intended to, uh, and also folds backwards for use under the pinball machine, uh, and then also allows me to fold the handle forward for storage, uh, because as it is right now, it takes up a lot of floor space, uh, which is really annoying. So uh, here's what I came up with in Fusion to hopefully take care of that. Uh, you can see that uh, in green here is the cart handle, and in blue there is the base uh, that's welded to the cart. And uh, I've put this uh, hinge uh, inside there in, in yellow and pink. So you can see the idea is that the handle will slide down into the uh, cart as it used to uh, and effectively slide over that hinge, locking it in the vertical position. Uh, but then the handle will slide up and allow the hinge to bend both forward and backwards. So I'll be able to get three uses out of this handle. And uh, in fact, I can hide the uh, handle here and you can see that the top part of the hinge has a slot in it that will allow the mounting bolt in that handle to uh, slide up and down. And uh, this uh, hopefully will solve our problem. And then there's the uh, mounting hole there that's in the original cart. Now, some of this ended up changing uh, by the time the part was done, as you'll see as this series continues. But uh, this was the original design. So uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, execute on that. So we're going to start by making the top of the hinge shown in pink. And uh, it's effectively just a cylinder with a tab cut on one end and a slot down the middle. All right, so to the junk pile, I've got some uh, beefy looking 12L14 round bar. So we're going to start with that. So we'll grab that out of here. And we'll mark off some lengths for the hinge parts and cut that off with the uh, porta band. Now I'm using, I'm making two of, the, of all of these parts, but I'm only going to show one. And we'll chuck it up in the lathe to start and face off that end. We're going to be doing some uh, some pretty heavy turning here, so we're going to need tail support. So we've got to get ready for that. And then we'll center drill for tail support. This is my trusty old number two center drill. Here's a little trick for squaring up your tool post. Just grab a one, two, three block, put it up against the face. And if you do it right, uh, it will actually hold itself in place when you are done. But don't do that, because it'll fall on your ways and you'll be sad. All right, now let's do some turning. I'm gonna get this guy down to the major diameter. Good looking chip action here. This is 12L14 steel, so uh, it's very, uh, very nice to work with. They call it free machining for a reason. It makes me look like I know what I'm doing. All that smoke is from the cutting oil because, of course, I don't have flood coolant on my little lathe, so for uh, it's turning steel, I, uh, I get pretty generous with the cutting oil. And those chips come off of there quite hot. mark off some dimensions here. This is the final length of the part. And we're just going to part that off. And the nice thing about parting with tail support is that the part doesn't fall. Uh, when it's done, it just kind of stops, which is very handy. 
All right, so now back in the mill, I've got that part set up in a collar block and a cross drill for the hinge pin. So I touched off carefully with the center drill there to get us started on the very top surface of that curve. And then we're going to drill through uh, one, one size undersize uh, for the final hinge pin, which is a quarter of an inch. So I'm drilling one sixty-fourth under that. The hinge pin is going to be made from uh, 01 tool steel uh, drill rod, and uh, so we want a nice precise uh, 250 thou hole here, so we're going to be drilling undersize and then reaming. Looking good so far. And to the aforementioned reamer. So I'm running the mill a little slower now. I think it's about 200 RPM and lots and lots of cutting fluid and lots of clearing of chips. I'm never in a hurry with a reamer. The more patient you are with them, I think the nicer job they do. Okay, so now we're gonna form the tab uh, that forms the top of the hinge. And uh, we're going to do that with this uh, two inch shell mill here. And if I did the math right, it won't hit that collet. But as you can see, it, uh, it won't because this is not my first pass. So we've got our first pass done there. Now we need to flatten the other side to form the tab. And because I've used a collet block here, it's very easy to just flip this guy over, clean out the chips, make sure we get a nice clean seating there, and drop it back in. And uh, you can't see it on camera, but there's a backstop as well so that it, uh, it uh, indexes very nicely in all three dimensions, and I don't have to indicate in the whole setup twice. So with that guy secured, now I can just mill the other side. Okay, so now we're setting up to make that big slot all the way through, and uh, I want to talk about this setup because uh, it's definitely not ideal. When I initially set this up, I, for some reason, felt that the w there wasn't enough room between those V-blocks to do the milling between them in the vise. So I used them to hold the end of the part and then supported the far end, as you can see, with the flat on a one, two, three block and some shims there. So there's a, there's a lot of things about this that can be improved. Uh, first of all, uh, I, sh I could have used a machinist jack instead of uh, that one, two, three block and shims. Uh, I don't actually have any machinist jacks. So this was incentive to go and make some machinist jacks. I'll be posting a video on that here uh, in a little while. But I think the takeaway here is that while this setup wasn't ideal, it did actually work just fine. And uh, there are lots of ways to do any machining operation. And uh, in fact, when I did the second hinge, uh, I just milled the slot uh, in between the, uh, the V-blocks and uh, that was a lot easier. But uh, there's lots of ways to skin a cat in machining and this worked just fine. So using the edge finder here to uh, get my center line. I cross drill the ends of my slot and uh, then mill out this space in between to minimize the amount of plunging that I have to do with the end mill. Uh, and in fact, uh, an even, even better way to do this would actually just be to hog out uh, most of the slot with the drill, just drill up a bunch of cross holes, and that would uh, be a lot quicker than having the end mill do all of this work. But uh, once again, uh, this did work just fine. All right, well, that is our final part. Just needs a little bit of deburring. Uh, the end is not rounded off yet. Uh, we're gonna be doing that in uh, a later video, but uh, we've got, we're off to a good start with this hinge project. So uh, tune in next time for part two, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.